wave rover sailing through a fog bank visibility about one hundred yards in this episode I'm going to show you my typical routine on wave rover at sea Well, we've, we've been going to windward now for about 36 hours. And in that time, it's been raining, we've had fog, and it's been uh, what most would consider miserable conditions. Last night, the temperature inside the boat was nine degrees Celsius. That's about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And now it's warmed up to 11 degrees Celsius in the boat. That is, I think, uh, 51 or 52 degrees Fahrenheit so it's not very warm and I'm going to show you what it looks like outside and then I'm going to get dressed up go outside and uh, I'm going to uh, heave to for a little while because I want to cook a meal and clean up the boat a bit and also one of the reef ties on the jib has come undone you'll see that in a moment okay here's what it looks like outside You take a look at the foot of the jib you'll see one of the reef ties is undone and after i heave to i'll be able to tie that up no problem we're now in about 350 feet of water that's quite uh, a substantial change from where we were about 48 hours ago when it was closer to 16,000 feet. Heading up on deck and I can tell you this is no fashion show. It's a big stew. Lentils and Toulouse sausages from France. Fine dining on Wave Rover. Now this is uh, the only meal that I'll have today, but it's a pretty big pot of stew and it's pretty heavy. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll probably have about half of it now and then I'll put the rest down in the bilge. It's a nice cool spot and it's dry. And then uh, later on in the day when I'm hungry, I'll have the other half. But it's a very heavy meal and, and part of the reasoning behind that is it's pretty darn cold outside. In fact, you can see my breath here. So uh, it, it's important to keep yourself warm. And for about the last 36 hours, I've been in these temperatures and you've got to really protect yourself. If you get, if you start getting a little bit of hypothermia, there's no one around to help you and you begin to make bad decisions then. So it's really important to really look after yourself, especially as a solo sailor. Well, on Wave Rover, we don't actually have a dining table, but um, I, I generally eat from the pot. And the reason for that is it's one less thing to wash up. So at the end of the meal, 
I just dip it over the side, put a little bit of seawater in. I have some liquid soap and a rag. I wash it out, clean the spoon, put it upside down, rinse it, and then uh, Bob's your uncle. But right now, let's see how this tastes. Wow, I tell you, having a hot meal really makes a big difference when you're cold. It really, it cheers you up and it gives you the energy you need to stay warm. So that's it from uh, Chef Allen. And um, next time you see me, I'll probably be taking a nap. I don't know what I was thinking. It's way too early for a nap. It's actually time to get Wave Rover back underway again. So as I already showed you, we're, we're hove to, or I've told you, we're hove to, and we're going to get back underway, but this time we'll be on a port tack. All right, let's go up on deck. Well, it's really calmed down quite a bit from yesterday, but we're, uh, the forecast is calling for higher winds this afternoon and sustained winds of almost 20 knots through the night. So we're going to leave the sails uh, reefed as they are, but I'll, I'll get her underway right away. I'll just show you what the hove to position looks like. Yes, that's fog. We have about 100 meters, about 100 yards of visibility. There's the jib back winded. Mainsail is still drawing, but it's it's two thirds reefed. The tiller the tiller is in the hole two position. There's a little shear water floating around. Amazing birds, I've had them around for several hundred miles. They love to fly around Wave Rover. Well, that's it. We're uh, underway again. I'll just show you what it looks like. Making about three knots to windward. And we're approximately 60 degrees off from where we want to be heading, but it can't be helped. We're hoping for a wind change perhaps in about 24 hours, maybe 36. Pretty darn chilly out here. I'm gonna head below. Well, currently, Wave Rover is on a port pack. And we'll stay in this port tack for about 24 hours because we're expecting the wind to change from the current northeast to more of an east-northeast. And when that happens, we'll change to a starboard tack and then we'll be able to make more north uh, by northeast. And that'll take us to Shabakla Bay, which is our next destination. Uh, apart from that, what do I usually do to fill my day? I generally do a lot of reading, so I have my little Kindle here. And over the last year, I've been reading all the classics. 
So I've read all the works of Hemingway, uh, Dostoevsky, Victor Hugo. I'm currently reading some Somerset Mom, very entertaining stuff. And uh, it, it's great, you know, on Amazon, you can get complete works of any of these great authors for two or three dollars. And if you were to actually buy those books and bring them with you, not only would they get wet, but they would occupy so much space in the boat, it would, uh, it wouldn't be room for anything else. Anyway, that's just a little bit how I spend my day. Next time you see me, I just might be taking a nap. Well, as a solo sailor, you have to get some rest sometime because if you're, if you're not well rested, you're not going to make good decisions. So a lot of people ask, well, when do you sleep? And what I tried to do, I tried to get as much sleep as possible during the daytime when Wave Rover is most visible. So at night, I can stay awake then and I can keep watch. But even at night, I'm really only looking around maybe every 20 minutes. So I do a lot of reading at night and uh, a little bit of writing and then I'll look up and I'll look around. I'll make sure the coast is clear or take whatever action is necessary. But during the daytime, that's when I get most of my rest. So how do I go about it? Well, I'm going to show you because it's nap time anyway. So number one, get the lee cloth out. Now right now we're on a starboard tack and you're probably saying, well, why do you need the lee cloth? Well, every now and then, as for those of you that have watched quite a few of the videos so far, you know that you get hit by rogue waves or other, other things that can happen and you'll be tossed out and you just can't afford, you just can't afford to be injured when you're by yourself. And the lee cloth, of course, is just leftover sail from my storm sail. When my storm sail was cut, I grabbed it. Thought that'll come in handy. So it's as simple as that. And then I just put this little slip knot in, so that if I have to get out in a hurry, I just pull this. This side collapses, and I can roll out. So, right now, it's nap time. And while I sleep, the Mark III self-steering gear keeps Wave Rover on track despite the fog and cold conditions. Well, that was refreshing. Oh, and I see in my AIS I have a contact at about eight miles. That's the other reason I like to stay in this bunk. I can look over at my VHF and on the screen I can see the direction Wave Rover is sailing and also if there are any contacts. I can see there's a contact on our starboard bow at about seven and a half to eight miles. So I'm going to check that out now anyway. Well, now that the nap is over, 
time to get back on deck and get a little bit of work done before the sun goes down. Well, thanks for joining me for what really was a typical day at sea.